limited usefulness. Uh, there is another protocol there <coughs> defined in JSR 177, which looks fit like open framework, open card framework, but it's not exactly the same. So there's a choice of ways in Java to talk to cards. Once you, now you know how to talk to a card, you have to find out what to talk to. And the thing you have to talk to is identified by five bytes at the minimum, or 16 bytes maximum, which is called the application identifier, the AID. And there's a command, a standard command defined in that ISO standard, which allows you to select uh, the application. And in a Java card, if you select an application, that application is notified that it is going to be talking to the terminal by uh, calling a method on the applet class. It's an abstract method, so if you don't implement it, you will not get notified. You will just receive commands. Uh, but if you implement it, you can then do some uh, reorganizing, opening, co copying some, some data from your non from your non volatile memory from the E square into your RAM so that you can actually have access to it. Um, make sure all the contractions were closed properly the last time you, you were running, etc. So we make sure that you can actually accept commands. Once you have done the selected the command, you're on your own. The application can do what it likes. Uh, within the confines of the firewall and other security constraints, you can run cryptography, etc. But the first yep. Yes, of course. How do these logical channels then relate to this uh, application identifier? Because so there, there, are, there are two mechanisms defined for managing logical channels. So the, the question is, how do logical channels relate to, multiple, to the applications that you select here? Yeah, you first mentioned like, uh, well, uh, a logical channel is related to an application, and when you like uh, uh, yes, use I, a logical I, channel, you can address that application. But then there's also the, uh, the application identifiers. So, yes, so the, the select command is a standard command, so it supports logical channels in, in, in its first byte. You can specify any channel specified in the select command is opened automatically and will be assigned to that application. So if you issue a command to the card, and in that command you will specify a, a logical channel which was open or not open, mm -hmm. it will be a logical channel that is available to that application. So any commands sent on that logical channel will go to that same application. So first you have to open a logical channel, and on that logical channel you have to use the application identifier. Is well, the, the selection, the opening of the logical channel is the same as selecting the application. Okay. It is in one command. You can explicitly open a channel, but that's, usually, that's not so useful. But okay. the main thing is you select and you create a logical channel which links that logical channel to the application selected in the card. So any commands on that logical channel will go to that application. So if you do another select, then you have, with another logical channel, you have two applications on two channels, which can be different applications or can be the same. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay. This was the part about talking to cards where you need protocols, you need to select the application and use logical channels. Let's conclude with some uh, looking at the security. As always, security starts with you, with the designer, the implementer. If you screw up, you, things won't be secure. It's always important to, uh, to notice, even though you may, many may realize it. Java helps you in doing the right thing. It is a bit easier to do the right thing than to, to do the wrong things. Our intention was that it would be very easy to do the right things and very hard to do wrong things by using much more objectives. But we have object-oriented programming, which allows you to encapsulate secrets, encapsulate data, and in doing so, you can define your access rules as methods and other ways. So you can actually design and implement and visually inspect your code as being su supporting your security rules. Um, the runtime of the card helps you. There is a, an API for keys, for lots of keys, to building keys, to generating keys, to setting the data of keys that will help you there. And there is the firewall. We make sure that nobody else will tamper with your data. So the only one who can screw up with your data is yourself. And then, of course, there is the firmware in the card which, uh, and the hardware, which makes sure that any keys you use, any encryption you, any decryption you, will not be, will be hard to analyze as DPA. It will be hard to read the keys from memory by breaking into the silicon, et cetera. So security is really multiple layers. And it starts with you. And the Java is only one small element in it. 
Java's awareness, object orientedness, and the framework help you. Objects in Java, keys are objects. There's a whole range of keys that for all different algorithms. So if you create a key, you create a key for a specific algorithm, and it can only be used for that algorithm. Uh, you can specify the key as being modifiable by the outside by setting the byte value in it. You can generate it in random in the card. But if you want to accept data from the outside, you can specify encryption to be uh, used on reading, or you want to export a query key, you can actually specify encryption to be used for exporting. And I have a bit of Java code here that should show this if I can find the light here. There is a package called Java Card X Crypto. It's called Java Card X because of export regulations. It was considered easy, better to put the cryptographic package in a separate uh, extension uh, domain. Nowadays, things are a bit simpler. Uh, there's an example class which uses an AES key. It has a key defined. This is the special type for AES keys. It, has, it calls the key builder function to build a key. And I, the parameter has disappeared here for some reason. Um, but you specify the algorithm type and you specify that you want to use key encryption. And here you see that there is some cipher defined somewhere else in this class which decrypts or encrypts. You can do both or either one the, the right size of the data for keys and it's bound to that key. And whenever you want to set some key, so if there is a command, an update command implemented by this method here, where you give it an array of some encrypted key data, you can make sure the key is empty and then you can just dump the data in the key and it will be decrypted for you. So this makes it easy to do the right thing and manage your key data without ex exporting or importing it in an unencrypted version. Any questions on this? Then we can move on. Security is always relevant to, relative to uh, what can be go wrong. Hardware attacks are known, are mounted to card. The good thing is uh, there are none that really are relevant to, uh, uh, to Java card. Some, there are some attacks have been, have been claimed in the, in the world, especially with light, about attacking Java VMs. Uh, but since the VM is not a Java VM, those attacks are not really applicable. Uh, all the t attacks known to Java cards are basically attacks on the card itself and not on the uh, Java specific elements in it. The runtime implementation, of course, can be buggy and over time it has improved and some attacks have been, some weaknesses have been found, buffer overruns and other places. But the nice thing about runtime problems in Java card is the only attacker is someone who has been allowed into the card. So unless you have a card which is completely open and you allow everybody in, your attacker is already known as one of the other applications. And since there are very few multi-application cards in the world where the app, one application is run by one organization, other applications by others, those two applications are usually not, uh, are usually friendly and never really in an attacking mode. But the weaknesses have been found and have been corrected. Uh, and so no, Java card, as of now, has, not, has no known weaknesses, although they may still, be, they still exist, of course, like every software. In smart cards and in other places, security evaluation is a very important aspect of making sure that what you talk about, what you build, is really meets some expectations. Common criteria has been involved over the uh, years as a way of expressing